I'm Garrett Lerner. This is Russell Friend. We're both executive producers and writers, along with Seth Hoffman, of the episode After Hours. It's different than any episode we've seen before because it's not at the hospital. It's what takes place after they go home and before they come in in the morning. So we structure the entire episode around, you know, thinking we've got to tell a story between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., Nobody's together. They're not aware of each other's stories, which in and of itself is different than what we usually do. And um, just by the very nature of that, the stories are equally weighted as opposed to the usual A story is the sick person, B story is more of a character story, C runner. There's been this idea floating around for a while about, you know, will we address 13's past as, as far as it relates to her being in prison? And we thought a great way to do that on our show, an organic way, would be if someone from her past in prison was a patient. And we wanted to do that in a surprising way, and we thought this could be cool if this woman actually shows up who's been injured during, you know, in some crime. So 13 is left with a moral dilemma. If I treat her, I could get in trouble because she's a criminal and I'm on parole. But if I don't treat her, she could die. So we thought that would be a really cool way to kind of have a patient story and a personal story sort of wrapped into one. This fight between Chase and 13, uh, thematically, I mean, story-wise, what we were going after was 13 really being pushed to the absolute limit, and her, and just wanting to see how far she would go to try and protect her friend and try and protect this idea that she has to keep her promise. And what does this mean to her personally? What's the deeper meaning behind it between her and her mother, her and her brother? Uh, and we thought it'd be great dramatically if, you know, we push her to the point where she's actually punches Chase. Um, and it was really fun to shoot. They had actually really um, practiced and choreographed that scene. They worked on that for a few days. And it came out great. Really intense, really good, really the, cool. The great part for me, I wasn't on set, but having seen the final reaction between the two of them was exactly what we had hoped for. Where kind of neither one can believe what just happened. And, right, right. Uh, and I just, I love the way the actors played that moment. It's actually, it's funny, there's a couple scenes that we lost that I can describe. That yeah. um, we lost due to both budget and time constraints. But you they, never shot them. They, we never shot them. Um, the first, the opening was going to be longer than what the episode ended up being. We were going to just meet this couple on drugs kind of in a Sid and Nancy kind of way and then there's this police raid she ends up describing the scene in the episode but you see a police raid you see them trying to you know they lock the door and try to get out the window and the boyfriend realizes the only way he's going to make it to freedom is with a distraction and you see the boyfriend stab the girlfriend who ends up being our patient which made it all the more shocking when she made it to her car, drove, and ended up at 13's house. Then there was another scene that we had to lose for budget and time constraints where Chase and 13 um, drive her to the hospital after their fight, and as they arrive, they see cop cars. The cops are waiting because they knew the girl was stabbed, they knew she'd be coming to a hospital eventually, and they have to look at each other, and it was a silent scene, but there's kind of a nod, and Chase gets out of the car and walks and you see him through the windshield. We don't hear him saying, but he's telling the cops what's going on. And 13's just silently taking in this moment that she's had to betray her friend. So that decision had come earlier uh, in the script. As it turned out, we kind of play it now at the end. It's been a long time since the character of Chase has uh, really had a vulnerable, emotional moment. Certainly, at least since Cameron left and uh, it was it was high time and we found a way we thought to create a moment where both 13 gets to be vulnerable pretty much in, more vulnerable than I think we've ever seen her uh, where she just admits her deepest fear and Chase in turn the only response he has is to make himself vulnerable and um, it was, a, it was a beautiful moment, I think, between the two actors. I got, you know, even having written it and seen it filmed in the editing room, got choked up watching it. Uh, felt a little... I felt it. It got you. Yeah, it got, you know. Right, so. So, let's get you admit that. Let it out. Let it go. F finish. I think we just loved Hal because I think he really loves his wife. And he's really trying to keep this relationship going. But 
he's also involved with this other woman at the hospital. And, um, you know, we knew we, we knew where we wanted to get at the end of this episode. You know, we knew we wanted to end with uh, this reveal that, um, you know, Taub's going to go ahead and, you know, agree to have this baby, whatever that means. You know, that he's going to be into it, he, he wants a child, all that stuff. And what we wanted to see over the course of the episode was his journey going from, like, you know, basically, what am I going to do, to then at the end saying, like, I know what I'm going to do and I want to have this kid. And even though he gets in all this trouble, I think we still decide with him because he really means well and he, he knows he's gotten himself into the situation and he knows he only has himself to blame. But somehow, I think because he's honest about it and he somehow means well, that I think we still... I think we still side with him. And I think it's also Peter Jacobson. He's just, frankly, you know, he's just a lovable guy. You know, he's just funny, smart. You know, it's hard not just be on his side, even though he's getting in all these crazy situations. Which is another thing that's fun about writing for Peter. Like, we always sort of look to see, like, what kind of trouble can we get him in, whether it's with his wife or his girlfriend. And in this case, it's with, you know, Bobby the Bouncer and this angry stripper and all this stuff, and somehow in the end, he still, he comes out, he comes out okay. I was the producer on set when we filmed the scene where House does the surgery on his own leg, and um, the performance was so breathtaking, it was the kind of thing that he would be embarrassed about having this guy go on, but it was like, to have a front row seat and watch that guy perform that scene, it was so intense, and it was, I've never seen this happened before, but at the end of the take and the director says, cut, the crew applauded. And it, that just doesn't happen. I mean, that's like, you know, right. these people who come to work and watch this stuff every day for the last seven years are kind of immune to it to a degree. But it was it was such an unbelievable scene, unbelievable performance, and so intense. It was interesting then to have Cuddy be the one who has to come and save him. Uh, he tries calling everybody, it ends up being Cuddy. She has Rachel at her side to complicate matters. And there's a bit of an emotional scene between the two of them where he doesn't want her to leave, and he's sort of clinging to... Is, is he, he, on the surface, says he's clinging to her because he trusts her, and he doesn't want to lose his leg. There's, you know, undertones that maybe there's a lot more to it than that. We do see that she's still there after the surgery, but by the time he wakes up, she's gone. So... Um, Right. Emotionally, it's left completely unresolved, and uh, that's why we have a 23rd episode this season. Right. Stay tuned. <laughs>